Paul, Republican of Texas. He ran for president this past election. He's here to react to what we've just heard. Concerning health care, Mr. Moore believes that universal health care is everyone's right. Threatens that the Democrats will lose seats if they don't support it. What's your stand on this, Congressman? I think there's, it's a fallacy to say that people have a right to somebody else's services. Now, you have a right to your life, and you have a right to your liberty, and you have a right to earn a living. You ought to have a right to keep it, but you have a responsibility to take care of yourself. But you don't have a right uh, to get something from government, because government has nothing, so government has to take it from somebody and give it to you. So it's a failed policy. It is, uh, uh, you know, a form of socialism, and socialism doesn't work. It leads to a big uh, so kind of if problem. You have, if, you, Congressman, if you have no money and you fall down on the street with a heart attack, you have no money, you, no one should take care of you? The government should not provide an ambulance no. or treat you? No, but we don't have a history in this country of that happening even before government started managing health care. I practiced medicine in both circumstances in the early 60s. Uh, we didn't have managed care and I worked in a uh, Catholic hospital. I made three dollars an hour and nobody was ever turned away and there were many, many church hospitals and you had uh, Shriner hospitals and a lot of, a lot of free care was given. Uh, today, even with managed care, they complain about, oh, somebody doesn't have health insurance and somebody's going to die because they don't have health insurance. But really, people don't get turned away. I mean, accidents happen. Man's imperfect. But for the most part, anybody, including you, anybody illegal, can go to the emergency room and they always get God. taken care of. They just don't get thrown out in the street. Are you, are you saying you like the current system? No, I, I, I uh, probably dislike it as much as <laughs> Michael Moore does. Be, but he, he's complaining about it being part of capitalism. It has nothing to do with capitalism. This is corporatism. The corporations, I agree with them. Corporations run things. The drug companies lobby us. The uh, insurance companies lobby us. And uh, the man, hospital management companies lobby us. The AMA lobby us. And that's all managed care. And, there, and we have a system where money and bigness influences the government. But that's corporatism. That's not capitalism. What we want are free okay, markets. Okay, how do you free, change that? Get, allow free markets to work. There, there's an example of free markets, and I might have even heard it on CNN today, of the example of somebody that was going to be charged $100,000 for surgery, and they went to Singapore and got it for $25,000, and the main reason they gave why they could afford to do it was that uh, they didn't have horrendous uh, malpractice payments to make, and there was a market. There was a market mechanism. So the patients, patients are leaving this country. They're going to India, but that's the market working. So you could, we have put Put our charity hospitals out of business at the same time because of inflation and management and all the mischief of government we have pushed these prices up pumping money into a system doesn't improve quality it increases prices look at our educational system Linda. we pump in money prices go up the quality of education go up and the quality of medicine has not gone up by just pumping more money into Linda. it Lyndon Johnson once said the probable answer is that a government's going to have to be half capitalistic and half socialistic. You have to have some. Social security is socialism. You have to take care of those who don't have. Pure capitalism can't work. Would you agree with that? No, 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 really. It's sort of like I practice OBGYN. I never could tell my patient they had a touch of pregnancy. And, uh, you know, you're either pregnant or you're not. You either have government intervention messing up the markets or, or you don't. You either believe in freedom and, and believe in, in voluntary choices. I mean, just look at this disaster with the swine flu vaccine. They, they take over the whole project, we pump in mil billions of dollars, and they come up with shortages, no, the distribution is lousy, and they're talking about forcing people to take them in, in places like New York, and who, no, nobody's even proved that it's necessary yet. We have still right. a lot yeah. of deaths from ordinary flu, far surpassing swine flu. So man, central economic planning but, in anything fails, and especially in medicine it fails. But, but Congressman, everyone online getting it who's getting it free is not standing there complaining about government involvement. Yeah, but I have a daughter that practices uh, uh, medicine, and I was talking to her about it, and she says, oh, yeah, Dad, it's, I, I can give shots, and it's for free, but we, we don't have anything. So when something is free and you don't have it, it's irrelevant. And, uh, and, and some of the people who don't want it are being forced to take it. 
We have lost our faith and confidence in understanding how free markets work. We turned it upside down by saying anytime corporations get benefits, we call it capitalism and freedom. And it's corporatism. It's the military industrial complex. It's all the special interests. And this is where Michael Moore gets it all wrong. He works, he believes diligently in free markets because he believes in the First Amendment. He believes in making films. He doesn't believe in prior restraints. So uh, why should he continue? Condemn capitalism right. because he calls he's he's condemning corporatism. I condemn it. To, I condemn it too. Special privileges of corporation okay. is maybe a big it's, problem. Maybe it's maybe maybe it's semantics. More with Congressman Paul right after the break. <laughs> Don't go away. I think capitalism, as it's defined now, has complete not only failed. Well, it hasn't really failed the rich. Uh, it's actually helped them. Uh, the, the wealthiest 1% uh, now have more financial wealth than the bottom 95% combined. So it's, it's, a, it's a really good system for a few people. Uh, Hi, Ron, do you, do you disagree with that statistic that uh, Michael Moore just pointed out? No, and I complain about it as much as he does, but I think I understand it differently because when a country embarks on deficit financing and inflationism, you wipe out the middle class and wealth is transferred from the middle class and the poor uh, to the rich. And uh, when we get into trouble, then the corporations, once again, who are in control, they come for their bailout and then they get the benefits and the little people don't. So yes, there is some truth to that, but it's the failure of the free market to exist. It's the, that is our problem. It isn't the fact that we don't have enough government. We have way too much government. The government created this monster. If he doesn't like what we have, he has to look at what we've been doing for 30 or 4 years. It's called interventionism. It's called Keynesianism. It's called inflationism. Right. It's called Here's big government. That's the problem. Here, here's what Michael Moore said about Afghanistan. I'll ask Congressman Paul what he thinks about the war there. Watch. Al Qaeda has left there. They they booked out of the neighborhood, Larry. They're long gone. Okay, they're in Pakistan. They're in parts of Africa. They're elsewhere in the Middle East. You know, they're here in the U.S. I mean, they're they're a real internet operation now. As Matthew Hull, the this uh, State Department uh, individual who resigned last month over the Afghanistan policy, uh, you should go on uh, online and read his letter of resignation. Uh, you'll see he explains it very clearly that. The, if we want to deal with Al-Qaeda, the, the last place we need to be right now is in Afghanistan. That's just a crazy, crazy-making place. It's unwinnable. It's immoral. It's illegal. It's wrong. And what is our CIA doing paying the brother of the president of Afghanistan who's involved in this opium trade that's funding the Taliban? What? I mean, where, when does what this is, stop? Uh, Congressman, you're a, you're a... You're a strong critic of Iraq. Are you a critic of the Afghanistan policy as well? Yeah, I, I sure am. Uh, my position is we shouldn't have gone in and we should just come home. But earlier on, Michael was uh, saying that he was hopeful and sympathetic to what uh, Obama was doing. Uh, I don't think he's quite willing to <laughs> criticize Obama like Bush, but I am. And uh, yes, uh, there have been a token effort of bringing some troops home from Iraq. Iraq is a mess, but at the same time, we're sending in contractors to replace the troops, paying them a lot more money, subsidizing the military industrial complex, and Obama ought to be condemned for that. You can't just pick out. So anytime you support Obama in any of those policies, they're bombing Pakistan uh, right now, killing civilians. And we're on the verge now of attacking or, or at least putting on more sanctions on Iran, which will lead to hostilities if we're not careful. Because we're, t we're talking about the Iranians just like we used to talk about the Iraqis, putting on tougher and tougher sanctions, making the people suffer, hoping the people are going to overthrow their leaders, not realizing the tougher the sanctions you put on the people so, the more you drive them into supporting their leaders so you would get out of afghanistan and iraq post haste i would and my saying during the campaign was we just marched in we can just march home there's not nothing good can come of it and uh, it's an undeclared war it's an immoral war we don't have any money the longer we're there the worse it's going to get and we just need to come home we can't nation build and besides i will win this argument because we are bankrupt and we can't afford it so it's going to end badly if we don't come to our senses and just say let's quit this militarism around the world i mean we're in we're in 130 countries and 700 bases around the world and we cannot sustain these and it is it's 
pumped up by both the left and the right in the Congress. Oh, we can't do away with this weapon. It will be bad for jobs. There's conservative Keynesianism and liberal Keynesianism, always government management, which always fails and gives us the financial crisis that we're the, in. The always thoughtful Congressman Ron Paul of Texas. Thanks. Thanks, Ron. Thank you, Larry. Always good having you with us.